This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. More on that later. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name's Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and on this channel, every week, we like to take a look at the macabre side of life. Any tragic disaster relating to caving, boat crashes, plane crashes, and more. But in this week's video, we are diving into yet more bizarre deaths to remind you that life is fleeting. One moment we could be here, the next not. So without further ado, grab a drink, draw the curtains. Here are some of the most bizarre and unlucky deaths I could find. This story begins in 1893, in the town of Honeygrove, Texas. A man named Henry Zeigland ended his relationship with his fiancée, Maisie. He wasn't really feeling the connection and carelessly tossed her aside. Maisie did not take this news well. She soon spiralled into a pit of depression and tragically ended up taking her own life. With the passing of Maisie, her brother was furious, believing that Henry was the cause of her death. He raced to his farm and approached Henry. In a rage, he pulled out his pistol and aimed it at him firing without a second thought. Henry dropped to the ground and thinking that he'd killed the person responsible for his sister's death, he turned the gun on himself and that was that. But a few moments later, amazingly, Henry stood up. He was in complete shock. The bullet had just grazed his face and actually lodged itself in a tree right behind him. He could not believe at how close he came to death. With this newfound sense of life, he lived life to the fullest, later having a son with a new fling. But 20 years later, Henry and his son were out on their farm cutting trees for firewood. After a while, they came to the tree with the bullet lodged in it. Henry tried to fell it with his trusty axe, but this was one stubborn tree. Henry refused to be beaten, so he reached into his supply shed and brought out two sticks of dynamite. He jammed these into the tree, lit them, and stood back to watch the show. Little did he know, this would be his last. The tree was no match for the dynamite. It exploded into smithereens. Henry's son looked over to his father to see him on his knees, he then face planted the ground. He rushed over and found that he had been shot in the head by the same bullet that was aimed at him all those years ago. He had instantly died. It just completely blows my mind that the bullet that was fired 20 years previously still hit its intended mark. And this story goes to show that you cannot escape your fate. Eventually, the bill comes due. On Monday, November the 3rd, 2014, a 58-year-old man named Gary Anderson lived in Somerdale. After a relaxing weekend, he left for his job as a construction worker in Jersey City. It was around an hour and a half drive. His job for Monday morning was to bring drywall from the suppliers in his truck and then heave them to the 50th floor of a new block of apartments that they were building in the city. So bright and early, he picked up the drywall and a colleague and headed to the apartments. Around 9 a.m., Gary parked his truck and stepped out. Here, he was seen leaning into the car, talking to his colleague. This is when a typical Monday morning turned into tragedy. Far above, on the 50th floor, a construction worker reached for their tape measure, and it slipped out of their hands. The worker looked down to see his one-pound tape measure tumbling to the ground, bouncing and ricocheting off metals as it did. It continued falling, and as Gary got out of his truck, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. After falling 50 stories, it hit him square in the head. He wasn't wearing his hard hat, it was still in the vehicle. They rushed him to the nearest hospital, but he died from his injuries just an hour later. Now this one makes you think of all the choices that Gary subconsciously made to get to that exact position on that precise day and time. In 2011, 38-year-old father of two, Brian Deppledge, lived alone in his home in Bradford, UK. He was reportedly a lovely person, very easygoing, and a brilliant father. In late 2011, he planned to give his daughter away at her wedding. Little did he know that he wouldn't live to see the day. Brian was busy getting his clothes out and putting them on a plastic drying clothes rack. He was going back and forth when he accidentally tripped over a small stool that was in his living room. He stumbled and fell backwards, straight onto the clothes rack causing it to fold and collapse in on itself. In the commotion, Brian somehow got his head caught in one of the clothes rung. He couldn't move his head in any direction whatsoever. 
he was stuck. In the way he'd fallen, the heavy wet clothes were wrapped around his neck in a sort of cat's cradle. He tried to force one of his right arms into one of the segments to free himself, but pushing on one of the bars only made it worse. It slowly tightened on his neck. Every time he moved, it resulted in more suffocation. With nobody in his flat to assist, tragically, Brian was unable to free himself in time. That same day, he was discovered tangled in the clothes horse, with his still wet clothes strewn around him. It was clear that he had tried for an extended period of time to escape, but was ultimately unsuccessful. A post-mortem was conducted and they found that his lungs were chock full of liquid, similar to asphyxiation. They ruled that his death was accidental, but coroners commented, I have never come across a case like this. Brian's was an untimely death caused by the most bizarre set of circumstances, probably rarer than being struck by lightning or even hit by a meteorite. Are you the kind of person who gives in to cravings and orders a takeaway because you're out of ideas or you simply don't have time to plan? Well, HelloFresh is the company that you've been waiting for. HelloFresh lets you effortlessly save time, money, and stress when it comes to dinner times. HelloFresh provides you with a diverse pool of step-by-step -step recipes every week that are completely foolproof. HelloFresh also makes it easier if you're trying to stick to your goals, if you're aiming for a calorie deficit, or if you're vegan or vegetarian, there's truly something in there for everyone. Choose your box, set your meals, and boom, amazing fresh food arrives at your doorstep. No if, no buts, no coconuts. Unless you order one, that is. So what do I love about HelloFresh? Well, number one, the amazingly fresh food is the selling point here. It's in the name, but I was blown away by the freshness of the food. The food stayed fresh all week, the meat was red, the vegetables were juicy, and the finished meals tasted so good. I was genuinely amazed. And the best part is their prices are very fair, being 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or grocery shopping. And it's not just dinner too. They also offer nutritious breakfasts, lunches, snacks, and even desserts. My partner and I loved the fact that we didn't have to worry about the evening meal. The instructions were clear and easy to follow. You follow the steps and voila, a brilliant meal is created in just 30 minutes, some even less. A couple of key words that I wrote down when I was eating the meals were flavor fiesta and speechless. We loved it so much that we're continuing our subscription for the foreseeable future. So get a flavor fiesta of your own and use the link below today. Use code TRAGEDYTALES16 for a fantastic 16 free meals across seven boxes and three gifts. So with that out of the way, let's continue with the video, but thank you very much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. On August the 8th, it was a perfect summer day for a 65-year-old man when he decided that he would take a stroll around his local town in the North Brabant province in the Netherlands. His wander took him to Geldrop Castle. Unbeknownst to the man, that day, the official Highland Games event were being held at the castle. The Highland Games are a traditional test of strength. Originally a Scottish tradition that spread outside their country home, the games involve speed, flexibility, and team spirit, ranging from caber toss to archery tag to hammer throw, attracting crowds of people. As the games played out, crowds of people watched in suspense as it was time for the hammer throw. A very experienced athlete who had done this many times before stepped up to the mark. He swung around the 22 pound metal ball round and round and round and let it go in the wrong direction. The solid steel ball went flying silently over the rim of the cage, straight over a hedge and into the nearby flower gardens. Seconds later, the silence was broken by a blood curdling scream. Before even looking, everyone instantly knew what had just happened. Passerbys and spectators rushed to the man's aid, but his injuries were severe. Ambulances arrived on scene and medivac helicopters were called in, but tragically, his life could not be saved. The athlete was utterly beside himself with guilt. He had inadvertently killed an innocent man. But of course, it was an accident, but many were flabbergasted and questioned how something like this could even happen. Spectators said that they were not allowed to go over the hedge where the ball landed, but the organizers did not stop the public from entering in from another entrance. The ball should not have even landed in that vicinity, so they thought that it would be fine. The police are yet to reveal the man's identity and formal investigations continue. However, a few days after the event, it came out that the organizer of the Highland Games did not even have an official permit for them to be held there which may or may not have contributed to the man's death. This story begins in Hong Kong on August the 2nd, 2014. 
a man named Ding Zhang made plans to celebrate his 50th birthday. Ding Zhang was a very successful real estate agent, estimated to be worth more than $1 billion, actually rated number 51 of the most richest people in Hong Kong by Forbes magazine. Now we won't go into detail here, but after a few controversial deals and various antics, many began to question the ethics and legitimacy of his fortune. Ding Zhang invited approximately 217 of Hong Kong's most political and economic elite to celebrate his birthday in a five-star hotel located in Hong Kong, named the island Shangri-La. They were all having a good time, celebrating as the elite do, when it came for Ding Zhang to make a toast. After a brief speech in front of all of his guests, it was time for the champagne. He began to crack it open, twisting and turning. And boom, the cork flew out of the bottle and hit him directly in his temple, dropping him to the ground. The crowd laughed at first, but they soon realized the seriousness of the situation. He was unconscious and was now sprawled out on the floor, but had no physical injuries. They dialed for emergency services and they soon arrived, but he never regained consciousness and sadly died just 20 minutes later. They later found that the cork had hit his head with such force that it had caused a massive brain hemorrhage. Even if he was inside a hospital when this injury happened, he probably could not have been saved. The police investigated the champagne and discovered that the bottle contained way more CO2 than usual, leading them to believe that it was a counterfeit. The problem of counterfeit alcohol in China has become rampant in recent years. One article even said that 80% of alcohol in most Chinese cities is fake. The owners and staff of the hotel refused to comment on the sale of fake alcohol, and this ultimately went down as a party to remember. In 2002, 42-year-old former serviceman Ronald Huff lived in a tiny apartment in Delaware. After leaving the army, he got into collecting exotic pets. It started with frogs, spiders, but they got larger and larger, and eventually Ronald set his eye on a new challenge, a Nile monitor lizard. Nile monitors are the largest lizard in Africa, growing up to 7 feet long or 2.1 meters. While they can thrive in captivity and are a decently common exotic pet in the US, they are known to be aggressive and can cause some damage. They're armed with sharp teeth and possess venom with mild effects. They're notoriously difficult to train. Despite the negatives, they are absolutely amazing animals and can be brilliant pets. Ronald knew this, so he got a lizard and he loved it. He loved it so much that he actually got another one and then another and another. And in the space of just a few years, he was now the proud owner of six male adult monitor lizards, all cooped up in his small apartment. So you can just imagine his place, right? Filled to the brim with cages. Well, no. He actually let these lizards roam around his house freely. He'd treat them almost like domesticated dogs. One day, one of the lizards got a bit too playful and actually bit Ronald's arm. He showed this to a concerned co-worker and he put it off to a one-off accident. However, a few days later, his colleagues began to worry when he did not show up to work. They called the police and asked them to perform a welfare check. The police arrived at his home, they knocked on the door, but nobody was home. After a while of shouting, they tried the door to find that it was unlocked. One officer stepped back while one opened the door, but it seemed to be jammed. It was as if something was in front of the door from the inside. They forced the door open and one officer entered, but the minute he did, he entered into a scene from a horror film. Ronald was slumped up against the door as if he was trying to leave, but instantly looking at him, they were puzzled and very alarmed. They had no idea what had happened, but his face had been eaten and was gnawed badly. They looked around and they found the lizards still roaming the flat. The largest was covered in blood. It was clear from the blood and the bite marks that the lizards had been feasting on him, but they could not say 100% if they'd actually overwhelmed him and then killed him, or if he died from natural causes and then was eaten. An autopsy was carried out, but unfortunately, they were unable to determine the cause of death. On January the 30th, 2016, it was a day like any other for two maintenance workers when they got called to an apartment building in Xi'an, China, to fix a broken elevator. They arrived at the apartments and they made their way to the elevator. It was suspended between the building's 10th and 11th floor. They peered in from above and they saw that the cable mechanism had broken. They carefully lowered themselves down and they found that it was actually a quite a big job. 
They decided that they couldn't be bothered to fix it that day as it was about to be Chinese New Year and like many others, the pair were eager to get back to their hometowns to celebrate. So they called it a day and they planned to return later to fix it. But just before leaving, they shouted at the elevator to check if anyone was in there. They held for a moment and silence rang out. With no response, they packed up their tools and they headed home. As they left, they turned the power off to the elevator and set another one running. They went home and thought nothing of it. 36 days later, on March the 7th, the two maintenance workers returned to the apartment to fix the cable. One stayed on the 10th floor and waited for it to lower, while one climbed on top to fix the cable. After it was fixed, they lowered the elevator to its correct position on floor 10, and they radioed in for the power to be turned on. With the power restored, the doors swung open to reveal a scene of utter nightmares. Inside the elevator was a 43-year-old decomposing woman named Wu, a resident of the apartments. She had died weeks ago. Examining inside, it was just absolutely tragic. There were hundreds of scratch marks where she had desperately tried to pry the doors open, only to find that they were in between floors. She had destroyed her hands in the process. I can only imagine what she must have gone through in that elevator. After the power shut off, it would have left her alone in the pitch black, cold and silent. If anyone had stayed home, her calls for help were likely muffled by the floor. It's enough to drive anyone insane. And with no water or food, it would have been a slow, agonizing situation to find yourself in. The news got out and questions arose. Firstly, why didn't her family report her missing? Well, it was reported that Wu had a mental disability and her family believed that she had just gotten lost. They did report her missing, but did not bother to look for her whatsoever. The other questions, however, are not so quickly answered. When the power was on, wouldn't she have been able to press the emergency alarm? And if so, why didn't she push it? Or was it broken? Also, why didn't she hear the men shouting initially? Another burning question is why didn't she have her mobile phone with her to call for help? Or why didn't she climb out the top safety hatch? Was it locked? This is just pure speculation, but it's almost like she was placed in there. The two maintenance workers should have opened the elevator door to check for any occupants. The residents of the flat were very angry at the management. It often took weeks for them to get back to them when problems were reported and they blamed them for the death of Wu. The residents staged a protest against the building management and local officials took steps to replace the people at the top. The police, however, treated the case as negligent homicide. So the pair were arrested and will reportedly face charges of involuntary manslaughter. So next time you see that elevator, maybe just consider taking the stairs. You never know, it may well just save your life. But that was yet more bizarre deaths. As I say in all of my videos, I hope that you were able to take something away from this, whether that be to avoid construction sites or not let lizards roam your flat. But make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them because you never know when you might not be able to. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, but I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.